What's going on all my YouTube buddies? It's me, Jacob, with another video. So if you watched my review of Reservoir Dogs when I started the Quentin Tarantino Marathon, I said that simultaneously I'll be doing a Christopher Nolan Marathon. Today I'll be starting that Nolan Marathon with my review of his very first film, the 1998 release, Following. So if you are new to my YouTube channel, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, vlog videos, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. And if you enjoyed this video, consider clicking that subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. So Following was released in 1998. It was the directing debut of Christopher Nolan, and it was an independent film he released on a shoestring budget of $6,000. That is insane. So in Following, a struggling, unemployed young writer takes to following strangers around the streets of London, ostensibly to find inspiration for his new novel. So when I started this Nolan Marathon, I forget that the moving Following even exists. A lot of people believe that Christopher Nolan's first film was Memento from 2000, and I thought that was his first film. But nope. Before Memento, he directed this really short film at only 70 minutes called Following. And I figured since I would do the Nolan Marathon, I would watch it as well. And it is available for, it is available on Amazon if you want to rent it or buy it or whatever, if you have Prime. Off the bat, you can definitely see the beginnings of the greatness of Christopher Nolan as a director. In fact, even on this film, he wrote and he shot the film, and that is very impressive in itself. This movie was shot in black and white. It was shot in the 4x3 ratio. So it's definitely a different looking film than most movies out nowadays, but Christopher Nolan was always one to go against the norm of most filmmakers. And you get to see that early on, even in something like Following. Uh, his style is very unique. Uh, there, it's you definitely see a non-linear structure here in following. As early on, you see our main character confess about his obsession with following people and how that gets him into trouble. And we constantly see the stuff going on. There are a lot of inventive twists throughout the film, and there is a manner of unpredictability. I mean, going into this movie, I came in knowing nothing about the plot or how the story would go down. And that is the best way to go with something like following because I wasn't sure how the film was going to end. I really did like the premise of this film. Like I said, it deals with the obsession of stalking people and the damages that it caused. And this is a movie that I don't really want to get into to avoid spoilers. I know this is a 20 year old film, but not that many people have seen Following and I don't really want to ruin the surprises in case you're watching this and you haven't seen the movie. I'm just going to talk about some of the things I thought while watching it while not spoiling it to ruin it for newcomers. And I thought the premise in itself was really cool. It, it starts out as a movie that deals with the negative effects of obsession just for the sake of writing a novel. And then it kind of turns into a heist film. And that aspect was unique as well. And there's a lot of drama and there's also some twists and double crosses. And I don't really want to dive into that because like I said, I don't want to ruin it just in case you hadn't seen it. But I will say that the movie is completely unpredictable. I did not see any of the twists coming and they are all clever twists that make sense by the time you get to the end of the film and it makes the movie all the more better for it and it did have a solid cast as where well. I did not know any of the actors in this they were all limited actors because no one couldn't hire anybody big because of his six thousand dollar budget but it is a solid cast, and I don't think there was a terrible performance. They all did good enough, and they carried the film through okay. I think I especially like our two lead characters, the writer and the thief. They have this fun little dynamic that 
you just enjoy seeing on the screen together. But Following is not a great film. In fact, of all the Nolan films that I have seen, this might be my least favorite. But that does not make it a terrible film. Because of the smaller budget, I don't think the editing was as polished as some of his later films. And because of that, the narrative is a little more confusing compared to his later films, which did a better job with the nonlinear structure. And you're more invested and immersed in what's going on. I didn't know the film was going to have a nonlinear structure at first, which didn't help. So that when I saw shots at the beginning that were repeated at the very end, I'm like, oh, we're, we are going nonlinear here. And it made it a little hard to follow at times because, like I said, I didn't know the structure going in. But I'm sure revisiting it, it's not going to be a problem. I will say, even though the film is 70 minutes long, and for the most part it's very well paced, I did find the middle act a little sluggish. I love the beginning of the film, and I love the very end of the film, but there were aspects in the middle act that didn't invest me near as much compared to the rest of the film. I think because the film slows down in the middle act at developing character and setting up the reveals, but it probably it was probably my least favorite part of the film. But I do really like following. It is a solid first time film from Christopher Nolan and it's definitely one I'd recommend especially for hardcore Christopher Nolanites uh, there's a lot of, obviously he's become one of the biggest directors working today and obviously Christopher Nolan deserves the success and accolade that he's gotten over the years from movies like the Dark Knight trilogy and Inception and Interstellar and The Prestige and Dunkirk but not too many people talk about this movie following. Uh, it is available, like I said, on Amazon. It also has a release from the Criterion Collection. Uh, if you rent the film on Amazon, it is the Criterion Master. For a movie on a $6,000 budget, I'm, I'm going to say it. This movie looks incredible. The restoration that Criterion did on the film. It's really amazing how they do it. <laughs> Like, it, it looks like a professional film, even with a budget that small. It's really impressive what Criterion does, the dedication they do in bringing these artsier films to life in high definition. So like I said, Following is a solid film. Not a great film, but still a good film that's very unpredictable and does foreshadow the greatness of Christopher Nolan as one of the best directors working today. So I am going to give following four out of five stars and on the 100 point scale, a 77 out of 100. Uh, like I said, like with what I'm doing with Quentin Tarantino, I will be marathoning all of Christopher Nolan's films. The next video I will be doing in this series is Memento. I have not seen that movie before and I have heard nothing but great things about the film, so I can't wait to see the film and share uh, that review with you guys. So that was my review of Following. If you have seen the film, please let me know what you thought in the comments below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? Uh, whatever your thoughts are, if I do get any comments, I will definitely share them in future videos down the line with the comment shout outs that I do. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the little notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, vlog videos, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. I hope you all have an amazing day. God bless and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!